I think the series of informational videos like this from hopefully what we've picked our experts is incredibly valuable. It's a valuable source of information for people at all levels, from patients up to other fellow professionals. And I hope that this would also help us focus down on areas where there are gaps in our knowledge, areas which we need to work on further. And we know there's a lot of research in dystonia. And the hope is that um, some of these will excite interest in the industry who may be trying to look for new niche markets to get into dystonia, to develop new drugs or new small molecules that can help. And uh, I think it's important they also realize that the breadth of research that's going on in dystonia from clinical studies in patients, in, in scans, electrophysiology, neuropsychometry, uh, all sorts of tests, all the way down into single cells, single genes. We have a we have a huge database of information about what we believe are the processes involved in dystonia and we may need help from external biotech companies to hone in on those which really are key to why people develop dystonia and help us develop new therapies. So I'm very pleased to be involved in this project from Dystonia Europe uh, because dystonia is a common condition when you take all of the different forms of dystonia together but it's also something that, because it's so diverse, seems to be quite difficult to diagnose. And often people go for a long time without a diagnosis. And then even when they do get a diagnosis, it can be very difficult to access good quality information about what to do uh, in terms of treatment and how to live well despite having dystonia. And I hope that uh, this project will help people in that way uh, understand more about what dystonia is understand the different treatments that are available and the things that they can do to get on with their lives despite the fact that dystonia is there. I think the evidence is uh, uh, very loud and clear that mental health problems in dystonia add to the burden of dystonia because the evidence suggests that depression and anxiety uh, are the major predictors of quality of life in dystonia, so that people who are depressed or anxious have a worse quality of life when they're living with dystonia. It's important that uh, people with dystonia have access to um, not only good medical treatment, but also facilities or um, resources such as this one um, to help them um, adjust to their illness, come to terms with their illness, and engage in some of the self-management um, procedures um, that may help them um, live better with their dystonia. If these um, videos um, help even one patient to live better with dystonia, it would be a worthwhile exercise. I truly believe this project is real of great importance in the uh, general community to spread information about dystonia. This project will allow us neurologists who work with dystonia people to spread information about dystonia and hopefully to increase and to improve the diagnosis of dystonia. If just one patient with dystonia will be diagnosed after seeing one of these videos, this work would be proven effective. I'm sure that many people with dystonia would recognize themselves in these videos and would allow them to have more treatment options.